you know that feeling when you see people using a product that you created by yourself that's the same feeling that most programmers feel almost every time because they have a lot of products on the market being used by people hi i'm ehonia obed and today in this video i'll be sharing with you how i taught myself to become a computer programmer Before I continue, if you already know how to program, I want you to comment below a proud programmer. The purpose of this video is to bring to your attention how easy it is to teach yourself how to program. You really do not need a computer science degree to be able to uh, become an expert in computer programming and that is exactly what I did. I started computer programming in my final year in secondary school. I already said how I develop an interest in programming in a previous video you can check the link uh, the description below for a link to that particular video the first point to look at right now is what exactly did I need to start programming if I'm asked this question today or right now my instincts will tell me to answer that you need a computer which you are going to program with or any device that you are going to program with but unfortunately that is not exactly what I did because I started back in secondary school at a time which I didn't even have an access to a computer not even a mobile phone so what I did first was to obtain a book that taught me how to write codes in HTML I picked that particular book because of my interest in building websites My choice of programming in HTML, I should say, it was out of curiosity. When I went to the library in search of a book to help me learn programming, I saw several other languages. But what struck me was that uh, how I envisage people all over the world seeing the particular product that I've done. That is, if I am able to create a website of my own that people all over the world can see and have access to it, won't I be proud of that? That's exactly what uh, prompted me to choose HTML. There are several programming languages out there that you can choose from if you want to become a programmer. But even choosing one of them is in itself a Herculean tax. But one question that you can ask yourself to help you narrow down to a particular choice of language to start with is what exactly you intend to do with that language. So ask yourself this question. What am I interested in building? Is it a mobile application? If it is a mobile application, then you look for programming languages that are purposefully for mobile applications. Is it a software that will run on either a PC or a Mac? Then you have to look for a programming language that will suit to that one as well. Whatever it is that you are looking at for first. So to me, it was website design. And when I decided that I was going to build websites, then I had to look for the particular language that will help me build websites. And that was HTML. So I started with HTML and CSS as well, which is used to beautify the website that you create with HTML. Now, after you've decided that this is the language that I want to program in, then you have to take another step further to choose to find out what exactly you need to be able to program in those languages. So for instance, for my instance where I chose to program in HTML, the next thing was to get what we call a test editor. That is what you use to program. Unfortunately, I was in secondary school then I didn't have access to a computer. So what I did was to use my exercise book, my normal exercise book to write in the codes that I learned. I could hardly tell whether I was wrong or right at the time. But anyway, that is what I did. Th things have changed, times have changed. So if you are starting and you have a computer, good for you, get the software, get a text editor, then you can start writing the codes in it. The problem with writing codes in exercise book is uh, you can't tell whether it is right or wrong. So all the while when I was writing codes in the 
exercise book. What I intended doing was to learn the basis of the language. All programming languages have what we call the centers of the language. That's basically the structure of the language. And it's key that every programming language that you choose to work with, you have to know the centers. So once you pick your computer and you get the software that you need to start programming, the next thing you want to do is to learn the centers of the language. One mistake that I've realized many beginners do is that once they start with the particular software that they have chosen, the programming language that they have chosen, they go about copying people's uh, already written programs and show it off. And that is not the best way to go about it. Even though, even if you are going to replicate what someone has done, make sure you understand the context, that's the syntax, the structure, so that at any point in time, even if you should stop programming and come back at another time, you'd always remember or understand what that particular program means. Once I got a computer after secondary school, I started coding on my computer. I downloaded a test editor called Sublime Test. And so now that is what I've been using to code in most of the languages that I code in. I also downloaded various online resources some of which I'll be sharing on my personal website. You can check them out at ahoniaobed.com. To ensure continuous practice, I downloaded more YouTube videos and continued to learn from some of these tutorials that I got. At the time, frankly, at the time when I was in a house, Getting data or internet access was quite difficult and it was expensive as well. But because I was willing, I did my best to save to buy internet packages. And I was always making use of various promotional internet bundles that were available. And I must confess that it really helped me a lot. I downloaded several projects that people have done. I tried replicating them and this that I did actually got me like it made me get better at what I was doing Go, uh, glory be to God I got admission into the university a year after and when I went to the university I make use of the free internet access that's the campus Wi-Fi on KNUST campus then I did more of the downloads I continued to download more videos watch them regularly practice and everything so you have to keep on practicing you can't cross that one out if you want to be very good at it it doesn't take only the start once you start you have to keep practicing more videos more tutorials you can as well speak to others who are good at it one good thing that happened to me was that i was fortunate to meet someone else who also was interested in programming at the time he didn't know anything about it so i introduced him to html and css then I taught him a bit, he picked it up, and that was it. And by the time that we finished the first semester, mid-semester, my results wasn't so encouraging, so I had to put aside all other extracurricular activities, including my programming, and focus on my academics. I did more of academics, and I think it was in second year, second semester, where my schedule reduced slightly but i thought of it that i really want to pick up this programming school therefore i went back to it and i timed a friend who i had taught html had also taken it a step further and he had learned another programming language called php to put things in perspective html and the css which i learned and taught him initially is just for decoration or creating the structure of the website but the php that he went a step further to learn is what is responsible for the back end the actions that happen at the back end so he also introduced me to php and i started learning that one as well as i moved forward with academics my schedule became tight and tight and tight but then it was too late to give up i had given my mind to the programming and i was keen to getting it done. So I continued, even with that tight schedule, I still found time to study and practice my programming. Now, to keep me going, I had to pick up various challenges. 
and a whole lot of people who saw me doing or coding were asking me how I could do it and they wanted to learn how it is done. This alone motivated me to do it more. If you have a skill that people are envious of, then obviously you would want to also keep doing it. So a friend of mine, my best friend in fact, who happens to be my roommate, approached me and said to me that with this knowledge that I have, can't we do something out of it that will be of benefit to others? So we considered it and we came up that we realized that one of the stresses associated with the first year pharmacy school was the fact that many of the freshers do not have access to resources or even they do not know some of the senior course mates on, at various levels who would help them along the line. So what could we possibly do to help reduce that stress for them? We brainstormed and came up with a solution that we called the FAMD e-library. So we created a, a, an e-library where various resources were available for these freshers when they, they have access to it so that at any point in time. The nice thing about it, it was that everything was offline so you didn't need internet access to, uh, to go around it and it helped a lot. So that one alone moved me to continue more and more and I learned various other things too. From there, I picked on various other challenges like building a live website, building a store management application, a whole lot. And that is what has moved me to now. And I keep learning new languages every now and then and doing a whole lot of projects. In summary, this is how I taught myself to program. One, I read about various languages and settled for HTML and CSS which is used in building websites because I was curious about owning my own website. Two, I took up various videos and watched various tutorials, started practicing regularly. Then the third thing was that I challenged myself, decided to do a project which I ended up calling the FAMDE library. And finally, the last thing that I haven't spoken about so far is that I was quick to ask for help. On campus, there were various people, there were a lot of people who knew how to program. So anytime I was stuck with anything, I just would get in touch with any one of them. And that's really helped me. My advice to everyone out there who has interest in becoming a computer programmer is that one, I was able to combine computer programming with my tight pharmacy school schedule. So that alone tells me that if I could do it, then you can also do it as well. Start from now and you can be great at it. Also, you don't need a computer science degree as I said already. You just have to keep practicing and doing. So I know that you can Therefore, go ahead and start. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. If you are new to programming and you've actually gotten some lessons from this video that has inspired you, I want you to kindly comment below lesson taking. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like the video, and also hit the notification bell to be notified of every new video that I release. Moreover, I would very much appreciate it if you could link up. Check the video description below for various links to my profiles on various social media. Till next time, it's bye.